Hi, how's it going? I just received this test stand in the mail a couple days ago and I liked it so much I thought I would do a video of it here. This is made by Ron. He's a gentleman who lives in Louisiana and he makes these test stands all by hand. And he's, he's quite a craftsman, I have to say. So I'm going to go over some of the features here and give a quick brief overview of what it can do and uh, how it's fully adjustable and we'll go from there. Uh, Ron came up with this design several years ago and he's been making and selling them ever since. And this particular one you see in front of you here is his fourth revision to the original design. Each time he comes up with a new idea and he adds to it or makes improvements and goes from there. And in case you're interested, he also makes a firewall mounted stand for engines that you know mount with, on the firewall. In case you uh, have one of those, it's a little bit bigger than this, but it's of the same quality. And I actually don't have one of those, but I have seen pictures, and it's really exceptional, just like this one. Uh, again, I was so impressed with his craftsmanship here and woodworking skills that I thought I would show it around. Some of the details he's done, and I'll go over some of the features here uh, right now. So, number one is everything's fully adjustable. Uh, you can move the throttle assembly. You can move it left, right. And you can move it up and down. Everything's really nicely done, very smooth. The other thing worth mentioning is his throttle assembly here feels like it's on bearings. That's one of the first things you notice. It's really nice. He's got a, set, a series of bushings in here in the back, and it's uh, very, very smooth. The other thing worth mentioning is his throttle rod here requires no bending. It's a direct shot directly up to the carburetor. Now, for the purposes of the video, I did take the muffler off this motor which happens to be a Super Tiger 51, but I wanted to leave that off to show show how everything works up here, what's going on. Now, even with the muffler on, I was able to bolt this engine in without any clearance issues whatsoever. There, everything's, everything's perfect. Now, these particular blocks up here are made of a garolite material, which is kind of like a carbon fiber. It's extremely strong, and when you bolt it down to torque specs, there's no no flex, no deflection of any kind. It's extremely, extremely strong stuff. Really nice material he's got here. Now this particular block here is solid maple and up front here he's got a birch plywood that encapsulates the whole engine so nothing can move forward once the motor's bolted down. Now the base is actually constructed out of a three-quarter inch birch plywood. It's a laminated plywood and it's not like a typical home building type plywood. It's got a really really pretty laminated surface here looks really nice um, now he's got rails that allow the movement side to side that are fully uh, recessed here into the base and also up here on the motor mounts so the motor mounts can move side to side to accommodate a whole range of engine sizes big large small I think I think the biggest that this one goes up to is about a 2.0 either a gas or a glow fuel so no problems there with what it will take. Now for the gas tank, he actually does include the gas tank. This particular one is an 8 ounce and sometimes he'll do a 10 ounce included. I guess you have to ask for that or you can ask for a smaller one or maybe even a bigger one. You'll have to uh, see what he has on hand or what he can get. Now the fuel, fuel tank position is also fully adjustable. That can move side to side as well and up and down too. So that's, that's really nice how he has that set up. Just, uh, just a locking uh, hand knob back here on the back side, or on the other side rather, and then one on the base. And you can kind of see what's going on here in the throttle section too. Just another adjustment knob here for up and down travel. A wing nut here. Now what he also has here is an Allen wrench. That is for this collar here on the uh, throttle assembly arm. And there's another collar over here for, for this part of the arm as well, which goes up to the, to the uh, carburetor assembly. There's a locking set screw in here and here, and also I believe there's one over here too in that collar as well. So, actually no, I'm sorry, this, one, this one's just a thumb screw. So that just, uh, you can set it that way, so that positions your throttle arm here. But again, this is this is a really pretty unit, and I'm not sure where he got this knob from, but this is this is actually really cool. I've seen some that were T-handles, but actually the ball handle feels a lot better. Uh, it actually looks a lot nicer too. It looks a little more 
looks actually really slick. So anyway, up front here, you can see the other side of the motor mount. It's a you know mirror image from the other side. This this is the same rail. It's a one piece rail that goes all the way through from one side to the other. Now, as he does include the fuel tank, the only thing you need is your motor and fuel, and you're all ready to go. Now, this fuel filter here and some of the line I had laying around, so I you know I made that. But uh, everything's pretty much ready to go. And what he also does is he does include nylon insert locking nuts up here so you can put them in here if you'd like. I believe it's a standard quarter 20 thread. Now this particular one here, what I have on it now is, is just a standard nut, but he does include the hardware for that as well. And he does have four pre-drilled mounting holes right here so you can clamp this down to a work table or a bench outside or however you're going to mount it. Now for my purposes what I did was I, I drilled these uh, holes here for the socket head cap screws and I actually use a Black & Decker workmate I'll try to rotate this here I'm trying to work around the camera so I recessed holes here and, and put in locking nuts here as well so the Black & Decker clamp actually clamps onto the side of this so this surface here sits flush on the top of the table and the clamping surface is here on the side of the board so that works for me so depending on what kind of setup you have you can alter this uh, however you need to so something else worth noting is uh, there's quite a few different engine variations out there now some as you know have rear exhaust ports so if you have a rear exhaust motor you can actually take your throttle assembly here and rotate it 180 degrees and have it over here have the, the knob would be over here and uh, the throttle arm would just be on the left side of that so it would still be in line but it would give clearance for a tuned pipe or a rear muffler to come out the back without any issues there and uh, same thing if you needed to you can also rotate the gas tank around 180 and have it over here on this side so there's a couple another engine type which you really don't see too many of these days is uh, this K&B Greenhead 35 torpedo now this actually has the exhaust port on the left hand side as opposed to the right which is pretty typical this particular motor here is a control line engine and if you were to run something like this on the stand the exhaust obviously go out to the left so what you could do is you could take your gas tank move it over here so then you won't get it all gooed up with uh, you know castor oil and all kinds of other nasty stuff another interesting little feature is if you have if you have small half a motors like this particular one is a black widow cox 049 you can actually bolt this right up to the front here of one of these blocks either side it doesn't matter and for something even smaller i have a little cox 020 here this little tiny guy same thing you just bolt that right here and run it or you can even bolt it to the other side if you really wanted to so it's very very universal stand he does supply the hardware for the mounting points and the wood like I said before it's like a like a cabinet makers grade wood it's it's really really high quality wood and he does a really nice job with finishing it he sands it really smooth he then adds about two or three coats of the sanding sealer and then on top of that he coats it with polyurethane so for glow fuel it's not a problem for gasoline engines it's not a problem it's impervious to either one of those so when you're done just give it a wipe down and you're good to go even castor oil won't penetrate it or any any synthetics either so it's not an issue uh, let's see if I can give another quick little close-up of the throttle arm this is this is actually really cool what he's done here how he's put this together it's uh, it's really slick everything turns really nice everything pivots how it's supposed to there's no binding uh, it's, it's really cool. It's a really nice design what he's done here. So again, at the bottom here, I'm going to have a link to his email, and also in the uh, end of the video here, I'll try to have that too. So anyway, get in touch with Ron. He's a really great guy to work with, and uh, you know, get one of these from him. I, I think you, uh, I think you'll be really surprised how nice this is. All right, take care.